Coming to you from that once forgotten artery that pulses through the center of the continental United States and into the heart of the Ozarks, Grace Matthews. Looking in from the northern border, our Canadian friend, along with his countrymen, feeling the effects of U.S. political issues, Connor Murphy. Welcome to Dueling Dialogues, episode 232. I'm Connor Murphy here with Grace Matthews in Springfield, Missouri. Hi, Grace. How you doing? Hi, how are you? Good, good. Weather's cooling off a bit. Not happy about that. I'm not either, but, you know, fall is lovely. The worst part about fall is that you know that winter's coming. Yeah, I know. And I know. that's just not pleasant. Yes. Yeah. Winter here means rains and not seeing the sun for a couple of weeks sometimes. So, uh, yeah, not not yeah. fun when it's dark and gloomy out. Yeah, I totally get that. <laughs> <laughs> Although I, I, I you know, I tend to get a lot more done. <laughs> I think I on the too. computer. And here's yeah. the question, though: Will it be harder yeah. or easier to accept our our new lifestyle due to coronavirus in winter? As yeah. as winter comes, you know, I think it, so. It hit us in the spring. When we were just getting all excited about getting outside and, you know, and doing the things you yeah. do. I think this you will know? be easier. I do, too. I, I, the mm -hmm. holidays will be a little dicey. I mean, you guys have got um, your Thanksgiving Day coming up here in a week. How are you guys going to handle that? Um, I don't know. I mean, for the most part, everything is kind of normal here, but... Um... See, we've got a we've got a surge of cases. We are at our worst right now. Yeah, not so much on the island here. We're, we're you know, a lot of tourists decided not to come over, um, and then some has uh, come over still, and everything seems fine. I don't think we have any new cases here. Mm. Um, well, I, I lost my uncle last um, Thursday. Oh no! Virus, and he was diagnosed. He had been being tested every day. And he got it 24 hours later, he was dead. Wow. Yeah, he did have some health issues, but he was really pretty young. He was 67. Um, he went into cardiac arrest um, about 18 hours into it. He went in, and they rescued him. And he went into cardiac arrest again, and the doctor said he was just too weak. Huh. Um, so it can be very serious. And it can be, you know, very mild. Yeah, well, it sounds like he had some heart issues. Oh, he though, absolutely, right? no, he didn't. Oh. But he had other health issues. He had diabetes. There you go. And he was in the early stages of Parkinson's disease. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, he, he did. And I think that issue is vulnerable. Now, as we all know by now, President Trump, has coronavirus right he um it was announced overnight last thursday yeah right after we podcasted oh absolutely and he was sent on friday to walter reed for a few days of um, monitoring and drug therapy right. now he put out videos the whole time he has had thus far a very mild case they treated him with several different drug cocktails and ultimately a round of, a ster of intravenous, intravenous steroid treatment. Oh, huh. Um, and he went back to the White House yesterday. He looked great. Wow. That's pretty, mean, pretty good. It's phenomenal. Now, you know, my question is, are the meds that he was treated with experimental? Are they available to everybody? Because a lot can be said for Trump. He's a tough dude. I, have they said what they used? They have um, said, but they haven't said if it's widely available. Okay. These were new, newer drugs, not some of the ones, not like the malaria drug that they right. talked about. Right. Okay. So I'm not sure whether they're available. Like, um, we are at our peak here. Well, we haven't even peaked yet. So wow. we're still rising every day. 
we have our ICU unit, ICU units had to expand in Springfield, Missouri. We are um, a lot of people are dying, huh. and there's just an awful lot of cases, and it's ra- running rampant through nursing homes. If there's any place that needs yeah. help, it is nursing homes. And you know, um, I have a mother in a nursing home with very serious dementia. And I tell you what, the thoughts you go through about them being, I don't know, it's, it, it's like them being captivated and surrounded around people that could have the virus. And in many cases, like that of my uncle, did have the virus. I mean, they're testing him every day. But you get somebody this week and, and they're going to die. Yeah. Yeah, there definitely um, is vulnerability, with, especially with certain diseases, and diabetes seems to be one of them. Absolutely, and I predict that we may lose as much as 50% of our nursing home population. In fact, um, Whoa. this is going to change the face of nursing home care. Wow. Um, for one thing, because they've built so many nursing homes in preparation for baby boomers. Right. Reaching, you know, that age, um, we're we're losing a great deal of that by baby boomer population. Yeah, holy. Smoke. And we're going to have too many, and we are also going to lose so many that people and families and you know politicians hopefully are going to demand that they become safer places. I right. mean, really. At their best, nursing homes are nasty. I mean, and, and I'm talking about when people are trying. Right, right. Um, so this is a problem, Bert. I, I sort of digress, but not, you know, because, for example, President Trump is older than my uncle. Right. Was, you know. So um, President Trump's in great health. Good for him. I mean, I said, well, he's almost obese. He's one pound from obese. You know, <laughs> the mainstream media are like, whoa, you know, wow. He's got to lay him. off the McDonald's gotta, a bit. Yeah, you just got to get him off that McDonald's, you know. You know, put a little, one last pad of butter on that bread, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, one pound away from obesity is, you know, it's bad, but come on, give me a break. This is America. Yeah. Uh, you know. But... At the end of the day, and I always kind of hate that statement, but sometimes it really <laughs> does work, does that gut strength that man has, and does attitude, does that beat disease? Now, when I was young and taking my psych classes, you know, um, they told us that, and, and this is a really bad thing to say, but I am repeating what we were taught, okay? Okay. That most people, that a lot of people that got cancer feared getting cancer. Now, I think today they would say, that's nuts, okay? But that's what we were taught. Yeah, like, well, you know what? I, I think a little bit of that is true staying positive and and stuff definitely has an effect on your health absolutely so does trump i mean he has the adrenaline going we're in the middle of election we're less than 30 days away i mean that adrenaline's healing isn't it yeah so I, i you know what i i do believe that that statement is a bit true i don't know how much but I don't either, you know, but being it. yeah, being treated for cancer before and some other ailments, uh, I I know that uh, I met a lot of people that sort of gave up and they're no longer here, and right. uh, I just kept up a positive fight and here I am. So hmm, I don't know, nothing we can prove, but no, we can't prove it, and I, I certainly don't want to diminish someone's death, right? Because um, you know, there comes a point when we would all give up. Right. I, exactly. You know, I mean, if you if you think you won't, think again. There, there enough can happen. Right. You know, and um, but I do think he has an admirable attitude, and he's got 
what I call gut fortitude. Yeah, well, he's I Trump. Mean, he is <laughs> he needs that to I survive. Mean, yeah, I mean, um, absolutely. And uh, I tell you what, I am sick of the media gaslighting him. Right. Um, the media has, I don't know, I, I, I think they've taken liberties with Trump and that they would never, ever take with uh, anyone else. On Obama, and, right. <laughs> yeah, oh, definitely not Obama, for yeah. sure. But, you know, for example, the minute Trump was diagnosed, one of the very first things they said was, Biden tested negative. Yeah, well, you know what I heard? He also tested negative for president. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> you know? And, well, I'm going to jump our hair just a little bit because I think it's important. Right now, the polls are saying, actually, one poll from Wall Street Journal that was taken immediately after the debate but before Trump was diagnosed, right? Right. Has Trump losing by 14%. Okay? It would be hard to say that Biden is winning at any point. Um, even if he was, right. but anyway, this was taken before the COVID-19 and you really have to wonder how the questions are asked. You know, a lot of times we have gone back and we've seen that, you know, it has been, they have heavily questioned Democrats. That's one way they get the numbers to go their way. The other way, they might say something like, instead of, are you going to vote for Trump? They might say, do you like Trump? <laughs> yeah. You don't have to like him to vote vote for him. That's exactly. Right. And you have to wonder, because when you look into psychology and, and you start going, what kind of person is a gaslighter? And we all know gaslighters, you know. Um, you know, too bad you're not six foot tall because I would date you then. <laughs> you know, people that say shit like that. Yeah. Right? Okay, we know those people. Or um, too bad you don't have a better job, you'd make more money. Right. Okay, they're, they're, they're passive aggressive, they're gaslighters. And, and that's what I'm going to accuse the mainstream media of today. But one thing in psychology we know about a gaslighter is they only do it because they need to cut your head off so they can be taller. <laughs> okay? They feel so damn bad about themselves, they have to lower you, right? Right. So they can be better. Taller, more important, more relevant. Yeah, I, I mean, I definitely see that stuff going on. Like you said, oh. right right away, Biden's testing negative. Like, well, who cares? We don't yeah. get daily updates, you know, yeah, and all and of a sudden, boom, there's daily exactly. updates. <laughs> okay, and Nancy Pelosi going, well, if he hadn't done that, um, if he rally. hadn't went out <laughs> and done that rally without a mask on, now, she's standing in front of a podium without a mask on, too. If I remember correctly, she went to the hair salon. Right. Exactly. Okay. So, if you were really 14% ahead, less than 30 days out, do you need to gaslight or do you need to cut his damn head off? <laughs> well, here's a question for you. When we, um, the last election, a month before the election, how, how much was Hillary ahead? About 20, wasn't it? Okay. I, I, I'm pretty sure in August it was like at 19%. Actually, a month out, I'm not exactly sure. She she was pretty far ahead, though. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it was a lot greater than 14%. It was greater than 14 Oh, absolutely. And, you know, everybody was like, it's in the bag and in the bag and Trump. They had their own polls going, right? Right. And they kind of knew the whole time because they had pure polls, what I call pure polls. And that's where you go, who are you going to vote for? Right. Instead of who do you like or, you know, all these 
misconstrued questions you can ask. Yes. So when you do a peer poll, you pretty much you get a better answer. However, Trump supporters don't tend to answer polls. Right. They don't want their houses burned down. Exactly. It's like you can drive through any given town right now and you're going to see more Biden and Harris lines. Right. Because the conservatives don't go around burning people's houses down. Yeah, or stealing the Trump signs or exactly. burning the Trump signs on their lawn and on and on and on. Those are some pretty funny videos, though, because some Trump supporters have booby-trapped their signs and it's and then film it. So it's pretty oh, darn yeah, funny. Yeah. And I love those people. I love those passive-aggressive people. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. But, um, yeah, it's, it, it, it's a crazy time. And, you know, I mean... I, I saw a little clip of Sanjay Gupta just really reaming Trump. Oh, Now, okay. I'll tell you one thing, though, that I, I, I just want to get in here on Trump's COVID-19. Now, as a voter, say you're sort of in the middle. Are you thinking, hmm, Trump's already had it. Biden has it. <laughs> Biden's pretty weak. Yeah. Could this be one of the best damn things that ever happened to Trump? <laughs> yeah, who knows? Okay. Who knows? Who knows? Okay, we're talking uh, vaccines. Okay. Okay, bad news. At least I thought it was bad news, okay? I see this headline. Merdina and Pfizer are reporting some serious vaccine side effects. I'm going, oh, no. Oh, no. Right. Growing the third yeah, eye. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I open up the articles, right? Yeah, yeah. And I read it, and I see, okay, headaches, chills, exhaustion. Okay, <laughs> that sounds like the flu. Yeah, and it sounds me, like COVID. It, it also sounds like a mild form of COVID. I, I mean, well, in one of the studies, it was one guy, and another, it was a few people, but theirs weren't that serious, okay? Now, you got to read further into the article. In the last paragraph, it says it's a double-blind study. It's a gigantic study. Okay. okay? A right. double-blind study, which means the doctors or nurses administering it and the patient, nobody knows who got it and who didn't. The guy could actually have COVID. Oh, I see what you're saying there. Yeah. He wow. could actually have it. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I mean, when a guy gets <laughs> sick, can you kind of break the rules of the double blind study? You know, I don't know. That's interesting. Surely at some point they will. Right. And and see yeah. if he's not going around infecting other people, you know. Yeah, that's probably the next thing we'll see in the <laughs> in the news is Trump's infecting people. I I that's don't exactly uh, true and um in fact I've kind of already seen that, you know. There you go. It's but, uh, they're getting um, easier to predict on the left. <laughs> they are, and my my concern though is that the left and the drug Trump are pressuring the drug companies into waiting till after the election, election to release the vaccine, and I think that's wrong. If it's ready, it should be released. Like I said, I'm not sure I want to be one of the first people to take it. That's not the point. Right. Okay. It should have nothing to do with election, right or left. But they said, well, maybe we'll wait till after the election because we don't want to seem political. How many people die in that in that middle of that? Yeah, there's no uh, consideration for loss of life there. Actually, absolutely. They're putting yeah. the election ahead. Yeah. Okay, here's, here's a question. How many people do you think have, I'm not talking about died, have actually had coronavirus around the globe well i'm sure a lot more people had it than we know well i i agree but statistically speaking the number stands at 10 percent right now now we're acting like it's the damn plague the black plague killed 50 percent of the european population whoa yeah okay we've got 10 percent of this have had it and about 0.06 have died. Right. There's almost, of, it's of not that, even 1%. 10%. Yeah. Right. It's not 1%. Now, um, and I, like I said, I say that with care. 
I just had an uncle die of it. Right. Okay. I, I certainly don't want to be insensitive to anyone, but I will tell you this. I thought the number would be at least 20%. Well, that's what they were predicting to begin with, but it's never creeped above 1%. Exactly. exactly. So, in theory, it's not as dangerous as the flus of the past few years. Exactly. Exactly. It's and I just, will tell you, I went for a flu shot, what, a month ago? Um, um, the hammer just showed up. Oh, okay. And I still can't move my arm correctly. That oh guy no! Did a muscle like crazy. Oh. So, um, anyway, so um, I'm a wounded soldier. Yeah, I don't, I don't get the flu shots either. Um, I this is my second one that I've gotten, so I don't know. Um, but anyway, ten percent around the globe have had it. Less than one percent of the ten percent have okay. died. All right. Okay. Um, the DNI director, John Radcliffe, has just, this just came in, has just declassified John Brennan's handwritten notes. He was the CIA director under Obama. The notes are, like I said, his and his alone in his handwriting, where he briefed Obama himself about tying Trump to the Russia Scandal to take the heat off of Hillary's email scandal. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, we knew that all along. We did, but now there's proof. And like I said, will anything happen to anybody? No, but that's a nice thing to have floating around before the lecture. Yeah, I'm just thinking about all the people that called uh, me and you conspiracy theorists. <laughs> when, Absolutely. When we were talking about that years ago. Oh. Oh my gosh, yeah. I mean, you know, those are still some of our most listened to shows. Yeah, so all you uh, that thought that of us, well, uh, <laughs> got <Wrong>. you. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. <laughs> I'll tell you, Trump, I think, made a big mistake a while ago, and I hope this isn't COVID brain speaking, but he called off the stimulus talks till after the election. Ooh. Nancy, now he, he was very upset with Nancy. Of Nancy course. Nancy wanted to write in $2.3 trillion of aid for cities that were that are going broke, but that were already broke before COVID ever hit. <laughs> and he said, hell no. <laughs> and then it went kind of like a little while, like an hour, and he comes out and he goes, no stimulus talks till after the election. Wow. Okay. okay, the stock Jeez. market was just about ready to close in a tank. I hope he revisits that because even if they don't come to an agreement, it's on the table. Right. Pulling it off of the table, bad news. And, you know, when the financial guys start talking about how we really need it, we really need it, we really need it. It doesn't matter whether we needed it when they started talking or not. Because right. by the time they they start talking, they create the need. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it was a mistake, too. I agree with you. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> it's the art of the deal. Art of the deal, <laughs> I, I yeah. I it is the art of the deal. I really yeah. is. It is. I, I really is. Because You've got to shock Nancy into doing something well, because and, she won't do anything. And she keeps acting like she's got the upper hand. Well, Trump's going to show her she doesn't. Hi, Hammer. How are you oh, doing? You're right. <laughs> doing good. That's a really good point. And, and uh, I, I think you could be right there. I, I, I feel that way. I do. I think he's just going to fight fire with fire and show her that, you know, that she doesn't hold all the cards. She might hold some of them, but she doesn't have them all. That cranky yeah. bee. She yeah. drives me crazy. Yeah. Uh, just watch them. That no mask wearing. Husband. I know. And she's blaming him. Anyway, um, an alarming trend is that college admissions are dropping. You know, I thought that traditional universities would drop enrollment, but that it would be picked up in more online, online non-traditional. Yeah. That's not the case. People are just setting this out. And if you go by what Faji says, Faji says nothing really changes till the end of 2020, 2021. 
Hmm. So are people really going to drop out for two years? Wow. And then go back? I uh, Yeah, I guess. Alarming I don't know. at best. This is an alarming trend and, uh, you know, I don't know. This is exactly how people get stupider. <laughs> it is exactly how people get stupider and how people get fatter on their couch and they, they wear their couch out, you know, and yeah. the potato chip sales rise and... You know, it's it, it's it's a crazy, crazy domino effect. Yeah. So, okay, Led Zeppelin, Highway to Heaven. I don't know when this song came out a long time ago. Okay. Okay, so the 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 trustee to the Spirit Band from 1970 whatever in 2014 sues Led Zeppelin. The beginning of um, Highway to Heaven was really the spirit band. Okay, so a lower court says, no, can do, Led Zeppelin wins. And then they don't like that, so they want to take it to the U.S. Supreme Court. Well, today the U.S. Supreme Court says, no, we we think it was a good determination. We like <laughs> Highway to Heaven. <laughs> oh, man, it sucks when... when there's people out there that'll sue you for anything or try to. Yeah, wow. I mean, the, the guy that wrote the song that supposedly was so into is, is dead and never did anything about it. Yeah. But his trustees oh. spent all the bucks, I guess, or something, and need a little moolah. I don't know, but... Yeah, maybe uh, he'll, he'll come out and say he was molested back in the 70s or something. And oh, probably try and so. sue he, somebody else. <laughs> he just wanted some hush money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, uh, I hear that happens a lot is that, uh, you know, there's a contingency fund put away on projects uh, to pay people to go away. So exactly. maybe he tried it and failed. Yeah. He still failed. Yeah, he did. And, you know, that used to be my ringtone, the beginning of Highway to <laughs> I, I'm fond of that song. But um, on a Saturday note, Eddie Van Halen has died. Um, after a long, long battle with throat and tongue cancer. Wow. Um, Valerie Bertinelli left him several years ago saying she still loved him. Right. But right. that after he had most of his tongue taken out and he didn't take care of himself, she just wasn't going to sit around and watch him die. Wow. And, um, you know, he was, um, he's not even out of his 60s. 65. 65 years old, too young. Wow, so yeah. uh, may you rest in peace, Eddie Van Halen. He gave, oh my gosh, what a guitar player. Come on. Well, I would have I mean, to agree talented. there. Talented, yeah. yeah. And we don't always agree, but life's a journey and we're all in this together. Um, Godspeed, take care of yourself out there, and thanks for listening. Godspeed you too, and everyone, thanks for listening. See ya.